Hi, Sawyer here, and this is the final episode of the first season of Real Numbers, the show that discovers math through the analysis of real-world problems. We are going to do things a bit differently today. Instead of presenting a problem to solve, we are just going to spend the entire episode finding as many different ways to approach last episode's problems. Let's get solving. Let's start with the first problem from last week. Danielle attempts half-court shots at the end of every basketball practice until she makes one. If her success rate is 20%, what is the expected number of attempts each practice? I really love this problem because it has many different solving methods. We can begin with our intuition. Danielle makes 20% or one-fifth of her half-court attempts. So maybe intuitively, we'd guess that Danielle would expect to need five attempts to make one. And every five attempts, Danielle expects to have made exactly one shot. So this is more evidence that this answer makes sense. But it's not a proof of the answer, so let's be a bit more rigorous. Last week, we introduced a formula for the expected value of a result that is always a non-negative integer, just like the number of attempts that Danielle needs to end her practice. The formula is the expected value of the number of attempts equals the sum from i equal 1 to infinity of the probability the number of attempts is greater than or equal to i. What is the probability that Danielle needs at least i attempts for some positive integer i? Well, that just means she must have missed her first i minus 1 shots. Each miss has a 4 fifths chance of occurring, independently, so for i minus 1 of them all to happen, we need to multiply 4 fifths by itself i minus 1 times. So using the formula, the expected number of attempts is the sum over i from 1 to infinity of this probability, 4 fifths to the i minus 1. OK, this is just a geometric series with first term 1 and ratio 4 fifths. So the formula for its sum is the first term divided by 1 minus the ratio, or 1 over 1 minus 4 fifths, or 1 over 1 fifth, or 5. So the expected value really was 5. Cool. Now let's use a new method of finding the solution to this problem, recursion. We want to know how long it takes Danielle to make a half-court shot on average. Well, this process of attempting half-court shots is very repetitive. Every try, either she makes the basket and stops, or she misses and is right back where she started, ready for another half-court attempt. When a process resets this way, often a recursive formula can play a role in the solution. So let's try to write down the formula with this in mind by breaking down the expected value based on whether or not Danielle makes her first basket. The expected number of attempts is one-fifth times the expected number of attempts conditional on her making the first shot, plus four-fifths times the expected number of attempts given she missed the first shot. When Danielle makes the first shot, her expected number of attempts is exactly one because we know she finished after making one shot. When she misses the first attempt, that attempt is wasted, and now she's back where she started, so the expected number of attempts conditional on missing the first is just 1 plus the unconditioned expected number of attempts. OK, so if we name this unconditioned expected value E, we can write down the equation that it must satisfy. E equals 1 fifth times 1 plus 4 fifths times 1 plus E. And we can solve this for E. E equals 1 fifth plus 4 fifths plus 4 fifths times e, or e over 5 equals 1, or e equals 5. Agreement with the formula. Nice. Now onward to more computational approaches. What if we just write down the expected value sum from the definition of expected value? Well, this is the first time the expected value is an infinite sum, since according to the problem, Danielle will continue shooting half-court shots until she makes one, no matter what. If she misses her first million shots, she's going to continue, and every shot will have a 20% probability of going in, no matter how tired her arms get. While these extreme examples show how our mathematical model of Danielle's practice-ending ritual isn't perfect, the probabilities assigned to these events are so minuscule that it won't have a big effect on our expected value. So let's write down the infinite sum. The expected value of the number of attempts is the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of i times the probability Danielle first makes her i-th shot. The probability Danielle first makes her i-th shot is the probability Danielle misses i minus 1 shots and then makes one, or 4 fifths to the i minus 1 times 1 fifth. So the expected value of the number of attempts is the sum from i equals 1 to infinity 
of i times 4 fifths to the i minus 1 times 1 fifth. Hmm, this looks a little tough to compute. It's not a geometric series because the coefficient of the power of 4 fifths also depends on i. In fact, this is called an arithmetico geometric series because it's a term by term product of an arithmetic series, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a geometric series, 1 fifth, 1 fifth times 4 fifths, 1 fifth times 4 fifths squared, and so on. If we write out the first few terms of this series, we can expand it vertically by taking the integer factor in the front as the number of terms in each column. So the ith column has i copies of 1 fifth times 4 fifths to the i minus 1, and so sums to i times 1 fifth times 4 fifths to the i minus 1. But now the rows are geometric series, and so we can sum them. We get 1 plus 4 fifths plus 4 fifths squared plus 4 fifths cubed, and so on. Wow, and so now these row sums are themselves a geometric series with first term 1 and ratio 4 fifths. So the total sum is 1 over 1 minus 4 fifths, or 1 over 1 fifth, or 5. Are you tired of getting 5 for an answer? Because I'm not. There's a slick calculus way to compute this sum by noticing that it's a particular value of a Taylor series. Let's replace every instance of 4 fifths in the sum we are computing with x. So we get 1 times 1 fifth plus 2 times 1 fifth times x plus 3 times 1 fifth times x squared, and so on. Factoring out the 1 fifth, we get 1 fifth times 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed. The terms left over after we factor out 1 fifth form the derivative of a familiar series. It's 1 fifth times the derivative with respect to x of 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth and so on. Inside the derivative is the Taylor series of 1 over 1 minus x, which we can then differentiate to get 1 over 1 minus x squared. So the total sum is 1 fifth over 1 minus x quantity squared. Now we can plug back in x equals 4 fifths to compute the initial sum. 1 fifth over 1 minus 4 fifths quantity squared, or 1 fifth over 1 fifth squared, or 5. Awesome sauce. All right, one final solution. Let's circle back to our intuitive argument from the beginning because there's a way to make it precise. Let's say Danielle decides to simulate a large number of ends of practices by continually shooting half-court shots and recording the results. After taking many, many shots, her record looks something like this. Each row marks the number of misses with an X and the make at the end with an O. If she does this for a huge sample, then she could simulate the end of her practice by choosing a row at random from the sample. This means that the expected number of attempts is the expected number of marks on a random row of that record. That is, the expected number of attempts equals the total number of marks divided by the total number of rows. But we know that there is the same number of rows as there are made shots, since every row ends with an O. Therefore, the expected number of attempts equals the total number of marks over the total number of O's. Since Danielle is 20% to make each half-court shot, as the simulated sample gets larger and larger, it must be true that the total number of O's approaches one-fifth times the total number of marks. So finally, the expected number of attempts is the total number of marks over one-fifth times the total number of marks, or one over one-fifth, or five. Whew. Okay, that's a lot of fives. I'm starting to think it might be the right answer to the problem of the week. Now let's figure out the bonus problem, where Danielle instead shoots until she makes two half-court shots in a row. Danielle has a 1 in 25 chance of making two half-court shots in a row, so maybe our intuition would say it would take about 25 attempts on average. Again, that's just an intuition. We can generalize the recursive approach we tried earlier to get a more rigorous solution. Let's break down the expected value in terms of the result of Danielle's first attempt. The expected value of the number of attempts equals 1 fifth times the expected value of the number of attempts given Danielle makes her first shot, plus 4 fifths times the expected value of the number of attempts given Danielle misses her first shot. Now we have a second possible state for Danielle to be in, where she's just made a single half-court shot and is shooting for her second in a row. So let's call x the expected number of attempts overall, and y the expected number of additional attempts Danielle needs given she just made a half-court shot. So this equation becomes 
x equals 1 fifth times 1 plus y plus 4 fifths times 1 plus x. But now we have two unknowns and only one equation. So now we should analyze y in the same way. If we've just made a half court shot, we have a 1 fifth chance to require only one more shot and a 4 fifths chance of missing and so wasting a shot and landing back at square one. In terms of x and y, y equals 1 fifth times 1 plus 4 fifths times 1 plus x. So y equals 1 plus 4 fifths x. Plugging this back into the first equation, we've eliminated y and can solve for x to get x equals 30. So our intuitive answer, 25, wasn't correct this time. I wonder if you can come up with an explanation for that. And maybe you can find a way to generalize some of our other approaches to the first problem to solve this two-shot case. All right, that's a wrap on season one of Real Numbers. This week, instead of submitting a solution to a problem, we are asking you to submit your thoughts and feedback on the show. What problems did you like the most? What topics would you like to be covered in future seasons? Do you have a problem that you think would make for a good future episode? Or a change to the show's design that would make it more fun to watch or interact with? More graphics? Yar! More pirates? More math? Hmm. I'm not sure how we could cram in more math. Maybe with an extra dimension? Anyway, please let us know your thoughts, and I'll see you soon. Keep solving. <laughs>